Nigel Howarth, Chef Patron and uh, Managing Director of Northcote Hotel and Restaurant. You run and own this place together with Craig Bancroft. What yeah. kind of a place is Northcote? Uh, Northcote is now a 26-bedroomed uh, hotel uh, with an 80-seat restaurant and private dining rooms for up to 50. Uh, on the 23rd of January, the 15th edition of Obsession started. Uh, why this culinary festival and what kind of a festival is it? Oh, this is a, a culinary festival to blow your mind, hopefully. Um, the reason I started it and, and why I started it is I, I went to the, the Festival of, of Food and Wine in Carmel in uh, California. And I work with the uh, top American chefs over there, you know, the Thomas Kellers, the Charlie Trotters of the world, Alice Waters, those sort of characters. And that really inspired me to come home and, uh, you know, see if I could do something in our, you know, sort of our northern um, heartland. And we have great suppliers and producers around us. Uh, we don't have the wine growers that California has, obviously, in Monterey Valley. Mm. But, you know, I thought it was a good idea. And it also was appealing to do something for our customers after Christmas in that sort of lull January, early February. You uh, uh, invited Jacob Jan Boema. It is a second uh, invitation. Yeah. Uh, why did you invite him? Uh, I inv <laughs> Good question. Why did I invite Jacob Jan? I could not invite him. Um, I just think Jacob Jan is uh, an inspirational guy. He's always up, uh, you know, um, both you know from a cookery point of view and a personal point of view. He's great to have around. Um, I've, I've eaten over there because I thought it was a fantastic uh, restaurant. I've worked with him in Villa Joya twice now. Um, he's become a friend, but more to that, he is a great cook and a great restaurateur. So um, it's a privilege for me to have Jakob Jan. It's a shame Kim can't be here. She's always a big plus with the wine side of things. But uh, And, you know, it's, it's fantastic that Jakob Jan comes over. He's just got his third star in November and, you know, he still has the time to come and work with us in his busy, busy schedule. So we're very grateful. What do you know about the kitchens, kitchens of your Dutch colleagues? Um, well, I know, I, I sort of know a small amount, I suppose, about Jakob Jan. And I know and respect that uh, the cooking at the highest level in Holland is very, very strong. Um, I worked again at Villa Joya, Villa Joya with Johnny Boer. Um, so I've, I've eaten at Am in Amsterdam um, in, a couple, in, in, in the two-star restaurants um, a couple of years ago. Um, I, I just think that um, Holland has something, you know, it has a strong um, restaurant side, you know, at the high level. Um, I don't know it well enough at the sort of mid and lower levels, but I certainly know that uh, having it, eaten it in Restaurant de Liste um, and being blown away, um, I do know that that level's really good in Holland. Dutch uh, research found out that Dutch restaurants do have a bad image in British countries. Can you explain this to me? I'm not, you know, it's a funny thing that. Um, I don't think there is a, a clear image of Dutch restaurants and I think particularly as I say in the middle level um, it's very grey um, so I think maybe that's something like it used to be in England you know when you go into London now and some of the bigger cities of, of the United Kingdom um, the food has improved dramatically particularly in London Manchester Birmingham Leeds the food's improving all the time so I don't think for me personally the image of Dutch cookery at that sort of middle level um, is clear. But why that is, I am not quite sure. Maybe um, the Dutch tourism, whoever runs and drives that, needs to get hold of that. Because I know there's lots of Brits go to Holland to, you know, holiday and to look and to go into the great cities. But perhaps that needs some, uh, some pushing and driving and, and developing. Yeah, more important, how can Dutch chefs uh, change this? What do English food tourists prefer? Uh, <laughs> I think you've just got to PR it. I'm sure, um, I'm sure there's, there's, there's enough great Dutch chefs. And what I like about the Dutch chefs that I meet is they're very confident. 
They're very, very confident people, and I think that's really important. Um, they're happy people, they're confident people, they're assured, and most of the Dutch chefs that I've met are very, very articulate. So I think all these factors put together, all you need to do is PR the fact that you've got great chefs in Holland. In Holland, a campaign is started to stimulate food tourism from the British countries to the Netherlands. Uh, besides the PR, what should we do to achieve that? Um, I, I think doing things like, uh, the, like that we are doing now, the cross-pollination, is good. So maybe we should set up more interactive groups where um, the Dutch chefs come over to England and the English chefs go over to, to Holland and work in the, in the good restaurants and then find more about the culture that's happening in Holland and how that's growing and how that's developing. Um, I, th I think this cross-pollination is the biggest thing. I work closely with the Portuguese chefs, so I know and understand now much more about Portugal because I go over to Lisbon, I go over to the Algarve, I, you know, I know Jose Aviles, you know, personally. All these guys, I know the Cochinas, the Noiners that work over in, uh, in, you know, in the great restaurants in the Algarve and Portugal. And I think you just need to understand. So it's, it's a working partnership that perhaps needs to be set up. We have one with the Swedish chefs. Uh, so we work closely with a lot of the chefs from Stockholm. So I think it just needs an initiative to set these things up. I think there's a, the English chefs, I am 100% sure, will be very, very willing to go over and work with the Dutch chefs and learn and cooperate. Because I think that develops and drives... Uh, the culture of food for the future. Your restaurant is honored with one Michelin star. How do you describe your kitchen? I think my food is very much based on, on regional cookery. So we cook um, from the ingredients around the local area. But I was trained in Switzerland and Germany um, and London. So I was trained, I suppose, more internationally. Um, so now when I look at my food, um, I'm always looking for inspiration in the local area when I go on holiday as well. So I think it's a, it's a, a sort of a mixture mainly of, of, of British regional produce um, with a spice of, uh, of global food when, when I go around and I'm inspired. Because I think all the cooks that I know um, are inspired from the neighborhood, from people, from relationships they have with suppliers, and then from a, from a, a global point of view, if you go to uh, Brazil, if you go to Portugal, if you go to Spain, you get inspired and, and you can transfer that and translate that into your style. Because of your international experience, can we call your kitchen a typical English kitchen? And if it isn't, uh, how do you describe your uh, the, the English kitchen? I think the English kitchen is often uh, based on French cookery. I think my kitchen is based on a on a British uh, a British cuisine that's got influences for sure from Europe. I think it's not as influenced uh, from France as some of the English kitchens because I didn't work with some of the great French chefs. I went to Switzerland, so I worked with German, Swiss, um, Austrian chefs. So there's a different influence. Um, but I still think that uh, the, the, the British kitchen is evolving now. Um, so the platform of European cookery is here, but it now has to evolve more. And that has to come from the heart of the United Kingdom. Your uh, restaurant isn't located in a busy area. No. How do you get people into your restaurant? Uh, <laughs> we get people into the restaurant, I think, by um, being good by being consistent, by being hospitable. You know, I put, I put hospitality at the top of the pile when it comes down to attracting people to, to the restaurant. Um, a smile costs nothing. Great food is no more work than good food. So I think it's a, it's a discipline, um, a, a culture that you have to foster within your business. And, and also you have to get some exposure. So I do a small amount of television. I work for a couple of uh, companies that give me exposure and I think that helps because when you're in uh, the provinces of the United Kingdom, France, Holland or wherever, you have to get a, you have to tell people you're here. You know, you have to, you have to shout out from a, from a mountain and say, 
my food, my hospitality is great. Come and see it. And then people come and if, if the food is great, they will come back. You know, and we live in a global village now, so you have to appeal globally. Um, and I suppose television is the best medium for that. Although I am a great believer that you have to be in your kitchen and not too much on television. <laughs> it's a, a luxury restaurant. Is a price is uh, is price an issue? Um, yeah, I think I think you've got to. You know, it's an interesting thing. I was talking to Jakob Jan earlier about this. We call it perceived value for money. No matter what level you're working at, you have to give perceived value for money. So if people want to spend twenty pound or fifty pound or a hundred and fifty pound on a meal. They have to feel that that is giving them value for money. And, you know, I'm stating the obvious. If people feel they come to your restaurant and it's not good value, it's not hospitable, they won't come back. 